Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Thursday, September the 16th. Today we remember St. Ninian, Bishop of Galloway, reading from For All the Saints. Today we celebrate the memorial of Ninian, a 5th century bishop who was the first to preach the gospel in western Scotland. He originally came from England, then a province of the Roman Empire, and spent many years in centers of Christian culture like Rome and southern Gaul. At that time, the leaders of the church tended to think that people who lived outside the boundaries of the Roman Empire were not worth converting to Christ. In Britain, this attitude was visibly reinforced by Hadrian's Wall, a string of stone forts built across the northern boundaries of England in order to keep out the Scottish tribes. But one day, Ninian either climbed over or sailed around this wall and headed into barbarian territory in order to bring the gospel to the enemies of his culture. Ninian eventually established his base in Galloway at a place called White House, where modern Whitorn now stands. The place was called White House because Ninian built a church there and had its stone masonry painted white. It is not clear how far into Scotland he extended his mission. He or his disciples may have worked as far south as the Lake District in England and as far north as Moray Firth in Scotland. This would make Ninian's mission one of the great links between the church in Roman Britain and the vibrant church of the Irish and Scots. And all because Ninian himself surmounted a wall of stone and the wall of prejudice, which divided two opposing cultures. Let us pray. High Sovereign of all creation, grant us grace to follow your holy servant Ninian in surmounting every wall of prejudice, that the glad tidings of Christ may be heard and accepted in every language, culture, and community throughout the whole world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end of God's greatness. Together, there is no end of God's greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. Together, and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Together, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power together and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever together. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The Lord is glorious in the lives of his saints. O come, let us worship. Psalm 71, appointed for today, is written by the psalmist in elder years and is a beautiful and very intimate and personal prayer. I encourage you to let your imagination consider the psalmist and also to consider your own desires and needs before the Lord. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, Deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails, for my enemies are talking against me. And those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. 
Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and gray-headed, O God, do not forsake me, till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? You have showed me great troubles and adversities, but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Let us pray. Holy God, be our strength and our salvation that we may never be ashamed to praise you for your mighty acts. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with King Ahab, King of Israel. This is First Kings chapter 22, verses 29 to 48. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth-Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his thirty-two chariot commanders, Do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, Surely this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the chariot commander saw that he was not the king of Israel and stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. The king told his chariot driver, Wheel round and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. All day long the battle raged, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran onto the floor of the chariot, and that evening he died. As the sun was setting, a cry spread through the army, Every man to his town, every one to his land. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried him there. They washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed and the dogs licked up his blood, as the word of the Lord had declared. As for the other events of Ahab's reign, including all that he did, the palace he built and inlaid with ivory, and the cities he fortified, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Ahab rested with his fathers, and Ahaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, became king of Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother's name was Azubah, daughter of Shilhai. In everything, he walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burnt incense there. Jehoshaphat was also at peace with the king of Israel. As for the other events of Jehoshaphat's reign, the things he achieved and his military exploits, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? He rid the land of the rest of the male shrine prostitutes who remained there even after the reign of his father Asa. There was no king in Edom. A deputy ruled.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. King Ahab is very crafty. He persuaded the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, to continue to wear his royal robes even in battle, therefore identifying him as royalty, while he himself went disguised. This was certainly, in my point of view, an attempt on the life of Jehoshaphat and certainly to distract um, the assassins from his tale. The fact that it was an arrow shot randomly that found the chinks in his armor and ended the life of Ahab points to providence, God's interaction here, and this being judgment upon Ahab. The king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, is contrasted with the evil king Ahab, immoral king Ahab of king of Israel. Just in this one little note, speaking of Jehoshaphat, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, whereas in contrast, Ahab is considered one of the most evil of the kings of Israel. You know, it's remarkable the influence that our leaders have upon us, consciously and even preconsciously and effective in in the whole culture. I encourage you to get out there and vote to make wise discernment as best you can and to participate in our democracy And our prayer is that the Lord will lead us and lead our leaders in truth and goodness and meaningful work for the common good. May the Lord lead us as a population in this upcoming election. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, We pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Andrew, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations, for our country in time of election, for all in authority, that your people may lead quiet, peaceable, and faithful lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the city in which we live, for all who live here, for the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, women and men and trans, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them. We think especially today of Toronto Urban Native Ministry, that you will be their help and their defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, especially giving thanks for St. Ninian, for prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sanctifier be upon you and all you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a great day today, Thursday.